All right, my guys, it is time to answer the ultimate age-old question, to cram or not to cram? And my answer is, I'm just gonna say it right off the bat, you gotta cram, okay? Cramming is beautiful. Okay, fine, just kidding, but like seriously though, cramming actually has a lot more applications than people say it does, okay? Everybody starts hating on cramming and say like, Oh, you gotta study ahead of time, otherwise you're not learning anything, okay? You're just like, <laughs> gonna forget everything. And that's kind of true, but I will talk about it, okay? There are actually very good uses for cramming. Hello everybody, I'm Karara, and today we're gonna be talking about my studying strategies that I use for school exams, AP exams, even Olympiads, although it's slightly different from Olympiads, anything, you name it, okay? We're gonna talk about that. And I'm making this video because a bunch of you guys asked me on the forum, like, how do you study for classes like A Push where you have to memorize a bunch of random information in a short amount of time? And then you guys also asked, like, what's your opinion on cramming? Like, how do you study for AP exams and that kind of thing? So, don't worry, I will answer all of those questions and more, don't worry. So the way we're going to do this is we're first going to talk about the different types of studying and, like, the benefits of each of them. And then, of course, I'll just end up with some final tips just bringing it all together, okay? Let's do it. So, first off, we got cramming, okay, and honestly speaking, even though everybody hates cramming and everybody's like, you don't learn anything from it, I personally think that cramming is very, very useful. Like, it's really good for remembering random facts and, like, diagrams that you tend to forget quickly and even, like, boring things that you don't, that don't really have any logic to them, right? Like, they're just disconnected, they're just things you have to know even though there's no logical explanation for it. It's like those kind of concepts where you ask your teacher, why, why is that true? And then your teacher's like, um, oh, uh, well, I don't really know the answer to that question after, like, five minutes of thinking. <laughs> And basically cramming is anything from like skimming through your notes the day before the test, like watching crash courses, uh, I am very, <laughs> I do that a lot, and just reading through the textbook once before you take your test. Now this form of studying is really really good because it like lets you remember the most weird things, right? Like I remember I was trying to study glycolysis for Yusubo, right? Basically glycolysis is a biology thing where you have like a ton of steps in it, and I was trying to memorize all of the steps, right? And when I was a freshman, right, I was trying to learn glycolysis, I was just like memorizing every single week and trying to see whether I'd actually remember it for a week. And no, I could not memorize it for a week. Every time I try to like study it again, I would just realize that I forgot it again. And it's not because I'm like horrible at memorizing things, right? Like I'm still good at it. Like even now I remember some of the glycolysis stuff, but I don't remember the whole thing. And the reason for that is because these kind of things where it's just a diagram and you don't really use it that much, you just use it like once on one test and you don't even know if it's going to show up on the test. You just tend to forget that stuff because your mind just doesn't care about it, there's no logic to it, you're just... Like, you're just trying to cram it into your brain, right? Like, it literally has cram in the name. You gotta cram it. So that's like an example of where cramming works, but long-term studying doesn't. Like, another really good example is A-Push, right? You guys were asking about it, and I really did not do any studying throughout the year. And okay, I'll admit, I didn't really think through, I didn't get through. I wasn't like, cramming is so much better. That is why I'm not gonna study. I was actually, I didn't study college lady, but like, still. <laughs> what I ended up doing was, the week before the test, I watched like, a ton of Joxy videos. What's up, beautiful people? My name is Daniel Joe's. Joxy, Joe's, Joxy, Joe's, Joxy, like pure Joxy videos, like the whole week. And I actually did pretty, pretty good on the test, okay? And I also took like practice tests just to make sure Joxy didn't like miss anything really massive and I didn't need to read up the textbook like afterward as well. But it really worked pretty well. Like literally during the test, I'm like, wait a minute, was this the thing that Joxy was talking about yesterday? Wait, I literally remember exactly what he said. If you ask me now, right, I, I have no idea what Joxy said. Okay, I'm sorry, Joxy, you're a funny guy. I, I appreciate your crash courses, but I don't remember anything you said anymore. And that's just because I don't use a single thing that I learned in A-Push anymore, right? Like, I don't do history bowl or anything, so I just don't end up using the stuff, and that's why I forget it. It's not because A-Push is necessarily bad, which is might be true or might not be true, no comment, but it's because the information you're learning there is very memorization heavy, and it's not the kind of thing that you use often, and doesn't it doesn't get stuck in your head. So doing consistent studying for A-Push just doesn't really make that much sense. Like, yes, you might want to, like, know some how things are interrelated ahead of time, and then just, like, memorize the actual dates and random stuff during the thing, but it really doesn't help that much. But then, of course, cramming does have its downsides, right? So the main problem with cramming is that you can't learn that much stuff in a short amount of time, right? Like, maybe for a unit test or something, you could learn everything the day before the test, but on a massive, like, AP bio test where you had to learn all the units, right? You can't really cram everything in a short amount of time. Like, I literally wish I could watch five crash courses at a time and, like, remember everything. That would be amazing, okay? I would have cut my studying time in, like, one-fifth. But the problem here is you can't do that, right? Obviously. And also, like, the when you cram, you have a timer on how long the stuff is going to stay in your brain, right? Because stuff you cram just doesn't stay in your brain for long. So... You had to kind of balance it out, right? You, you, like, the more stuff you have to cram, the longer it takes, but then the more you're gonna forget the stuff you crammed in the beginning. Like, I cannot, for the life of me, cram for AP Chem. Like, I already knew, like, quite a bit of AP Chem going into it, but, like, I still, if I didn't do any studying beforehand, I would be kind of screwed during the test. And the reason for that is because AP Chem has, like, so many different kinds of problems, there's so many different concepts, and 
basically there's a lot of like math and logic and that kind of stuff to it. There's a little bit of memorization, so yes, cramming does help in AB chemistry, but it's not enough. So that's basically what I got to say for cramming, right? It's really good for memorizing like stuff in a short amount of time, but it's pretty bad for memorizing a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. And it's like, you, you have to like break it up between cramming and the other type of studying, which we're going to talk about now, long-term studying, AKA cramming, but less. This type of studying is great if you're trying to learn like how to do different problems, you're trying to learn the logic behind certain concepts, or you're just trying to learn like the really, really important concepts that show up everywhere, right? And the reason you do this is so that when you're cramming for AP Bio the day before the test, you're not asking what the heck is DNA when you're trying to learn what meiosis is. <laughs> that would have been very, very sad, okay? You guys should know what DNA is before you're cramming for your test. Cramming but less is also very good if you're trying to learn high logic stuff, right? Because usually people could remember logic a lot more than they could remember like unrelated facts, right? And also cramming logic is a really, really big waste of time. And if you're learning the logic for the first time when you're cramming, you're wasting even more time and it's just like inefficient, right? So like going back to the AB Chem example, what I did is I just did a ton of problems like throughout the year. Like whenever the teacher assigned homework, I legit did the problem. I did not lay to them, although a bunch of my friends did. <laughs> I will not name any names. Maybe I will. No, I'm kidding. I don't want to dox anyone. But I actually did the homework problems just to make sure I knew how to do the problems. And I'm probably not going to forget how to do them because you have to use some amount of logic to solve them. And just by doing a bunch of problems, you also get to see what's important to know and what's not. And you start to forget like the less important stuff and you actually remember the stuff that you is used in a lot of problems. And then after doing all the problems, just the day before the test, all I had to do was cram like random stuff like Henderson Hasselback and solubility rules and all that nonsense. Bro, that sucked so bad. <laughs> oh god. And all the different exceptions, dude. How could I forget? So basically for me, even though a lot of people think that like studying ahead of time involves taking really detailed notes and all that stuff, for me it's literally just problem solving. Like that works the best for me. I feel like doing problem solving is just the best way, right? Because that what that's what actually gets it stuck in your head. That's what's actually going to show up on the test. So... I really think that you should try problem solving. Of course, it doesn't work for everyone, but I think it works better than note taking, in my opinion. My humble opinion. And now, just the one like bad thing about studying ahead of time is that if you study so ahead of the like test, you'll have to remember it for all that time before the test, right? So that is one thing that's bad about studying too ahead of time. All right, so that's basically the main two things, right? Cramming and not cramming. What's good and bad about each of them? So here are some final tips, like key takeaways, all that good stuff. Alright, so first, cramming with crash courses and skimming is good in a lot of cases, and honestly speaking, I feel like cramming would benefit you no matter what class you're taking. But it is not good enough for everything. So, number two, studying ahead of time is really good to just make sure you know all the really important facts and logic, right? Just make sure you know how to solve the problems, and you'll probably be able to like recall it a lot faster when you're cramming later. Just when you're studying ahead of time, make sure not to waste time <laughs> like memorizing the glycolysis step, because that's something that works better with cramming. Then third, keep track of the stuff that you should cram eventually once you get to the test and keep track of the stuff that you should like make sure you know like right now so you don't have to like worry about it later. In other words, just like plan out what you need to cram, what you don't need to cram. And then fourth, try to find note-taking strategies that work for you because I know a lot of people have different kind of things. For me, it's literally just problem solving, but I know a lot of my friends, they take really, really neat notes. I'm not jealous of how long it takes them to take those notes, but I'm very jealous of the final product, dude. They actually look so good, what the heck? They have like their Muji pens, like all the different colors, but <laughs> I'm too lazy to do that. My handwriting sucks anyway, so we're not going to talk about that. Some people do flowcharts, others write like really concise notes just so that's the only thing they had to skim before the test. But for me, like I just think that problem solving works the best, right? I turn everything into a problem. Like if I need to memorize a diagram, I basically challenge myself to draw the diagram from scratch like five times. If I need to memorize a bunch of dates, I draw like the table of like the stuff on one side and then I have to fill in the other side, right? That kind of thing. And finally, make use of the homework and tests that your teachers give you because they actually know what they're doing, okay? Even though like teachers sometimes are kind of boring and like the lectures are <laughs> kind of hard to follow, right? The, the homework and the test they give you are probably going to somewhat resemble the AB test. Also, like, where else are you going to get problems, right? Like, homework and tests are stuff you have to do. You might as well do them, right? If you're getting practice, you, you have to do it anyways. Like, no point slatering it if you anyways have to do it and it's going to benefit you anyways. So yeah, make sure to take advantage of them. But that is all I got for you guys today. I hope it was helpful. Basically, the point is, cramming is actually good. They don't listen to people who say that cramming is, like, uh, um, like, always bad. But, of course, take it with a grain of salt. You can do both. You got to do both to do the best, okay? But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have any other suggestions because I very much appreciate the suggestion. This was a very good suggestion. I honestly didn't realize I had this much to say about cramming and not cramming before I made the video. But other than that, we are done for today, again. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching again and see you guys next time.